We know that President Biden is going to be speaking with uh, Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau later on this evening, supposedly around 5 p.m. Eastern. It'll be his first foreign call to a foreign leader. To set the stage now, let's bring in former Ambassador Bruce Heyman, former U.S. Ambassador to Canada, I should say. Bruce, uh, I imagine it will be a very friendly call. The two leaders know each other very well from before. What will be the, the primary substantive subject of the call? Well, I, I think it's connecting once again. They connected. It was the first call after being elected. First international trip before leaving office as vice president was in Ottawa. So the substantive nature of this conversation is finding paths where we can work together and reaffirming the importance of the Canada-U.S. relationship, which was under attack left, right, and center by Donald Trump. And so that is not just on a bilateral basis, but yeah. also on a multilateral basis as well. Bruce, as you know, uh, the keystone will likely come up in this call. Um, if it doesn't, one of Canada's premiers, Albert Premier Jason Kenney, will have uh, thoughts about that. And trade sanctions have been raised. You were ambassador under Barack Obama. You know very well uh, this new White House administration stance on this pipeline. It's been negative for a long time. You've probably had these conversations. What else can be said about it? America will not be supportive. Canada really wants it. What, how do we repair that indifferent? So first of all, I, I, I understand the frustration. I experienced it directly. I was there during a period of time where there were all kinds of long delays in terms of finally making the decision. I think that, that period of time, it ended up being a distraction for the U.S.-Canada relationship. And once we made the decision, things opened up to allow us to have an incredible working relationship with Prime Minister Trudeau going forward. Don't get me wrong, Prime Minister Trudeau really wants this and wanted it, but he also recognizes that everybody should recognize this has been well telegraphed, well analyzed, that this was coming. The then vice president was running for office. He made it clear a year ago that this is what he was going to do. And if asked, I would have said, do it exactly this way. If you've already made the decision, just tell them and let's move on, which is what, what he did. I will tell you this, it was very unfortunate that the premier used the language that he did, mm -hmm. which was extreme and disappointing, but I do believe he said it under a period of frustration. And so I, I don't want to react to his specific comments other than saying I'm sympathetic to the situation he's found himself in. But, but in other words, your understanding of this would be the best thing for Canada-U.S. relations would be to, to put a bullet in the head of Keystone as soon as possible so we can move past it? I think that's already happened. I think that people don't, you know, those people who think that this is still alive in some way, I don't think they're, they're paying attention. Um, I think it's gone, and I think we need to just come to terms with that, and let's move ahead and figure out the things that we can work on together. There's so much opportunity between our two countries to do so many good things, and this is the time to do it. Um, we're faced with COVID. We're faced with uh, racial violence. We're faced with large mm. unemployment, uh, climate issues, all of these things. And then we sit with Canada together, G7, G20, right. NATO. So this is our opportunity to work together with Well, Canada. so it'll be very important, obviously, to the U.S. president to have Canada you know, in his corner as the U.S. tries to regain respect at many of these international organizations, which, you know, the U.S. is rejoining and also obviously the Paris Accord. But Bruce, you know, I think there's an assumption out there that tariffs and all of, you know, the, the, the trade yes. measures enacted by President Trump formerly will now just go away. Is that, is, is it premature to, to think that that will happen under Biden? Think about it this way. Um, you work really hard to gain trust with a partner in life, whether personal or professional, and then you do something to violate that trust. And then you turn around the next day or the next week, in this case, four years, and say, hey, everything's good now, right? And you know what? We have to work really hard to earn our trust back, not only with Canada, so but So you're saying we will take off some of those tariffs? Well, I, I don't really, I'm not cognizant of tariffs on Canada right now. Well, there have been some measures. So we are... Continue, Amanda, yeah. 
just uh, Bruce, just in terms of the the issues you think that we can tackle together. I mean, climate change may well, Keystone aside, to your point, maybe it's dead already. There will be other irritants here, um, and that will be the file where we feel them. Right, we're an energy resource rich country. What's your advice on uh, on what Canada can do or try to extract from uh, from President Biden by way of uh, other benefits if we are going to give up a lot? Let's work together on innovation, creativity. Let's work together on the next generation of energy and efficient transportation. Let's work together on finding infrastructure that we can build together cross border and throughout North America that will enable our next generation of youth to move ahead. Um, and then let's work together on finding ways that we can operate on the world stage together to solve some of the larger world problems. First and foremost has to be COVID, and we've got to start tackling this COVID problem. Used to be 400,000 people crossed our shared border on a given day. And so, you know, now with essential travel only happening and non-essential travel closed, you know, this is hurting our shared economy, restaurants, hotels, all of these things can't get that going till we get the virus behind us. And that's the work, I think, that Joe Biden and Justin Trudeau, president and prime minister, need to talk about right at the top.